from Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Mr. Dollar, this is Mrs. Tackett. Did Mr. Hart talk to you about Abel? Oh, yes, Mrs. Tackett, he did. He thought maybe you and I could get together this afternoon. Yes, of course. Please hurry. I certainly have a right to know if my husband is dead. Edmund O'Brien in another transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Corinthian Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during the Abel Tackett matter. Expense account item one, $5 transportation costs from Hartford to the New York address of Mrs. Abel Tackett. The apartment door was standing open, and I walked in. It was dark inside, except for the dim glow from a blue light at the head of the stairway, where the beat of drums came from a phonograph. There was a crude native mask on the wall with an idiot's grin. Something stale and heavy in the air. There was no one downstairs, so I went up. Walking up those stairs was like walking out of civilization. She was sitting on the arm of a chair in front of the phonograph. You heard them. I did not want them to. You, you're a half hour early. Well, that gives us a half hour more to talk. My plane leaves tonight. What does the insurance company say? I'm going to British North Borneo to look for it. They do think he's alive, do they not? The company always operates on that premise, yes. The rain. That awful rain. There is no getting out of it, he says. Uh, have you seen any of his letters? No, I haven't. I want to read you this. I'm lost. I've always been lost. I don't know who I am or what I am or what I was intended to do. I've played all the parts and been all the places. And found nothing of myself. The jungle is as nameless as I am. As nameless as... As lost. That was the last one. From Borneo. Vandercan. Five years ago next month. Six years since we were married in Paris. You must find him, Mr. Dollar. Well, I'll tell you the truth, Mrs. Tackett. I'm afraid that I'll be looking for a dead man. After all, he's been gone a long time. Maybe he just stopped writing. Maybe he didn't. That's why I'm going over there. Maybe he just stopped writing. Maybe. Maybe he wants nothing to do with me anymore. I woke up in the morning and he was not there. Just a note. He could be alive and not come back, could he not? You told me he's been gone for five years. He has a paid-up policy. If he's dead, you receive over $700,000. If he's alive... What then? Do you think he'll come back? No. But he'll be alive. How old are you, Mrs. Tackett? Twenty-four. Look, I want you to promise me something. If I come back with proof of his death, you'll move out of here. I promise. But you'll never prove that he's dead. Expense account item two, $1,280.45 for the trip by air from New York to Chicago to San Francisco to Manila. Expense account item three, $200 on the first ship to Sandaka. They called me Supercargo. I ate with the captain in his cabin. Cooch and tamar, edible bird's nest, ah, filthy place. Hold me yours in these waters and I never set foot on Borneo. Why would a white man go there? Not for diamonds. Malaria, maybe, or a new type of insanity. You look sensible enough. Who is this man, your brother? No, never met him. But I've got to find him, that's all. Second biggest island in the world. Three million souls. Dusons, Bahaus, Murads, Dyaks. <laughs> Ugliest people in the world. Took a young planter and his wife there. Six months ago, it was. Carried the bodies back my last trip. How did they die? The jungle. Oh, come on, I'm a close-mouthed man. Who are you looking for? 
You wouldn't know him. His name is Abel Tackett. Abel Tackett? <laughs> I never heard of Abel Tackett. <laughs> you find me a hand west of Tawa who hasn't heard of him. You knew him? Nobody knew him. He wasn't a man to know. He was a man to talk about. I want to show you something. Look here. Hmm. That's a nasty scar. Right across the chest. Abel Tackett. If you find him, give him me love. How did that happen? In Manila. He did it slowly as if he was enjoying it. Had a picture of a girl and I said something. Coffee? No, thanks. Was it his wife? His wife, perhaps, or somebody else. Steward! Hot coffee! Hot coffee! Hot coffee! Something happened to men out here. Men that might have been easy and calm any place else in the world. Something happened to them. Hysteria. Wild anger. Madness. In the weakening heat, the sudden bursts of temper arose where men would kill over a matchbox. Channel fever, the crewman called it. But perhaps there was another reason. The name of Abel Tackett. This is my dream, that some night I find him asleep, that it is very dark, that I slip my knife into his throat, that I feel his life going, that I hear him to cry out. Oh, I want to hear him cry out. What did he do to you? Unspeakable. Unspeakable. Oh, I'll look for him. I'll find him. Oh, knife. Shoot, kill, hate. Ah, oh, fuck it, devil. Fuck it, devil. Sandakan. We crawled around the point. There is no coast. You never know where the land begins and the ocean stops. The mangrove swamps melt into the muddy water. The inevitable tin roofs of the tropics... The breathless heat of the equator. Sand again. I found the British North Borneo Company office next to an exporter's shop. The secretary to the assistant district manager pointed me into a rat tan chair and handed me a fly swatter. Oh, Abel Tackett. Oh, fabulous fellow. Great strength, drive, power, you know? Uh, why are you looking for him? Well, we understand that he was dead. We hold a policy on him. Tackett dead? Oh, that's improbable. Oh, he's quite a man. Um, I say, you, you didn't happen to bring any cigarettes, huh? Uh, American cigarettes? Sure. Yeah, here's a cart. Oh, no, please, please, you spoil me. What was he doing out here? Tackett? Oh, no one seems to know. Some say gold, diamonds, gutter percher. Escape, perhaps. He just popped in one day from Manila, got all the necessary papers, and headed into the interior residency. Not before he caused a bit of a ruckus in a native pub, however. Um, I say, you haven't been to London lately, have you? About a year ago. Oh, not since then, eh? Oh, oh shame. What I wouldn't give for some swept ginger beer. Splendid for the tropics. What is the case and it never came? I had to settle for gin. <laughs> Look, can't anybody tell me about this man, Tackett? What is this legend, this myth? What? Oh, it's a paradox, Mr. Dollar. A man of great strength and great weakness. Boy, oh, like us all, in a way. <laughs> looking for something. Always looking for something. Uh, but looking for what? Now, look, you're, you're trying to solve this thing in American terms. This is the tropics, Mr. Dollar, and here we admit the inexplicable. But I've got to have answers, Mr. Kenyon. Oh, no, you don't understand, Mr. Dollar. Here, look at this, this map. You see here? Sandakan. Then you leave for the interior. 200 miles inland is Kwamut. Now, there's no trouble thus far. And he was reported to be there eight months ago. From Kwamut, it's a different world. There's fever, reptiles of all sorts. It's not worth it, really. I mean, is it a large policy? $750,000. Oh, for a man living in Borneo, that must be a tremendously high premium. Well, <laughs> a million couldn't get me out there. And a thousand could take me home. How do I get to Kwamut? Uh, oh, by a lorry. One of them goes up tomorrow with supplies for the garrison. We can fit you aboard, but... Oh, this is absurd, Dollar. Yeah, I know. Well, all right, then. I'll send you to Hargroves, our representative there. Oh, what I say? Don't forget those cigarettes. Uh, 
husband's been going on like that for five days. Mm. He can't tell you anything. I'm sorry to hear that, but can you tell me anything about Tackett? Mm. Wait till I close the door. Mm. Are you looking for Abel Tackett? The fever'd never get him. You know if he's alive? Alive? Sure he's alive. How do you know? If you knew Abel Tackett, you'd know he's alive. We spent a lot of time together when I was on the coast. And did you know Tackett in the state? Nope. Playboy, he told me. Said he wanted something, but never knew what. I told him what he wanted was love. But he wouldn't stay, and when I tried to stop him from leaving, he... if you find him, what happens? Depends how we find him. If he's alive, I suppose I'll try to talk him into going back home. If he's dead, I want the proof. You better go back to your husband. Nothing I can do. Hey, look, Mr. Dollar, if you find him alive... I'm going to try I... to send him home. Tack, it'll never go back home. I'm going with you. Not this trip. I'm going with you. Come in. Mr. Dollar, I want to talk to you. I told you, Inez, I can't take you long. You better be getting back to your husband. He needs you. He's dead. I'm free now. I've got to find Tackett, Mr. Dollar. Look, I can't... I can help you. I can get a good guide for you. He'll take you all the way to Penanga. I know the jungle, Mr. Dollar. Please. What do you hope to accomplish? Oh, I don't know. If I could talk to him, I could get him to come back to me. I know I could. Look, Inez, I'm going to be very frank with you. I don't like you and I don't trust and you. And you don't understand me. But I'll tell you this, you'll never find him without me. I knew him better than anyone else, and you have to have a good guide, and I can get it for you. I'll get my own guide. Someone sent supplies to him a month ago. I know who it was. Okay, it is. It's a bargain. Pack up. She took me to a trading post, and I met the owner, who operated under the obviously false name of George Brown. To me, he looked big and clumsy, but he'd been trading with the interior for ten years, so I decided to take the recommendation, as if I could do anything else. Sure, sure, I know where he is. At least I knew where he was a month ago. I've been trading with him for over three years. Okay, when do we leave? <laughs> you don't know what you're getting into, mister. Did you ever hear of Long Why? It's a village across the border in Dutch territory. We'll need four porters and supplies for a month. When do we leave? The last porters I sent into him never came back. The Pun and Dyke's got them, most likely. <laughs> They're headhunters, you know. Which one of us are you trying to talk out of this, you or me? I can always use $500. That isn't all the pay I'm going to get. What do you mean? If I find Abel Tackett, I'm going to kill him. We will continue with yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. But first, every Wednesday night, CBS brings you Groucho Marx with his wonderful quiz, You Bet Your Life. It's one of the brightest, most spontaneous, most genuinely funny shows on the air. So be listening this Wednesday night on most of these same CBS stations for You Bet Your Life, starring Groucho Marx. Now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account item five, $830, safari to Long Y, Dutch Borneo. One of the first things I learned about jungle travel was not to waste breath talking. Not until we made camp that night was their conversation. Uh, a slow day. A woman slows us down. Where is she? In her hammock. It couldn't be helped. It was a bargain. I, I didn't want her to come. I wonder why he picked Long Y. I wonder a lot of things. The easiest travel here is on the rivers. If he picked a river village, it would have been simple. This way, we have to fight for every foot. What are you going to do when we find him? What do you mean? <laughs> About Mark killing him. I'll decide when the time comes, if it does. Maybe I don't think you'll go through with it. You know, if you really wanted to, you wouldn't have wait waited for me to come along. I suppose it was in the back of my mind before then... I knew something had to be done, but I hadn't decided. Now, I have. What did he do to you? 
What does he do to everything? He spoils it. When the pool and darks are peaceful, my trade is good. When they're not, my trade is... Oh, now look, Brown. You aren't going to tell me that this man is capable of stirring up a few thousand natives. That's, that's ridiculous. Is it? Well, how does he do it? Why? How? By being there in their country. They hate him. They're afraid of him. And when the Dyaks are trouble, they're dangerous. Why does he do it? I can't think of any reason. He makes no profit from it. He lives. He works a plot of ground. He hunts. I suppose it could be that he doesn't know he's doing it, but he is. He's got to be moved out. The only way to move Abel Tackett is to kill him. What? I'm going to turn in. I heard part of what Brown was saying. What are you going to do? Well, I'll have to protect Tackett if I can. Protect him? <laughs> that sounds funny. I never thought he'd have to take that from anybody. You know what I'll be protecting. You better get some sleep. Wait. What now? Why do you hate him? You know, you've never even met him. Well, I've talked to people who have. To a ship's captain with a with a knife scar across his chest. And a little deckhand from Manila with a hurt so deep he couldn't talk about it. You and your husband, a few others. And I met his wife. He's never talked to me about her. Well, that's the first thing I've heard in his favor. Maybe he's human enough to be ashamed of what he's done to her. Maybe he realizes what he meant to her. And that she'd stop living when he left. Because that's what he's done. It's not all his fault. The trouble he had in Manila and Santa Can. He told me the men thought he was afraid of him. He wanted to show him he wasn't. He'd never known people like that. He didn't know how to get along with them. David, it doesn't make any difference how I feel about him. We'll get to him as quickly as we can. I'll figure out some way to stop Brown if he makes a try. Maybe that'll be too late. But Brown's going to be stopped, Mr. Dollar, I promise. If you don't do it, I will. Go get some sleep. We break camp at dawn. Lying in my hammock, looking up at the solid ceiling of foliage that hid the sky, and with the unaccustomed language of the jungle bothering my ears, I tried to get a fair perspective of the situation. But I couldn't. I could answer any of the questions. I dropped off to sleep realizing that I was more than anxious to meet the amazing Abel Tackett. There was no sign of real danger until the third day, only the painful monotony of slashing at vines with heavy knives, fighting insects, stumbling over half-concealed ankle-high branches, of sweat-filled boots and soggy clothing, and a hundred other arguments against Borneo. Mind the tent. It looks like a fern here. Got it. It carries a brutal sting. This is the one, Inez. Watch it. I see it. I... Hold up. Come on. What is it? I wondered about that. What did he say? Head hunting. I found a body on the trail. Coming along? Yeah. Better stay here, Inez. Uh, I wondered about that. It's been too quiet. We haven't spotted a dyak since we started. This section is usually swarming with them. Uh, uh, poor beggar. How does that look to you, Dollar? You still think the natives aren't stirred up? No. Oh. Oh, it looks like they're stirred up for him. Poor beggar. Uh, he can thank your man Tackett for what he got. Uh, we don't have to look at him. Uh, it's the work of a Punan. You can tell by the clean wound. Their mandows are the sharpest ones in the island. They know we're coming, Inez. Yeah. How do you know that? I know them. They hide the bodies. They don't leave them on trails unless they've got a reason to. Like telling us to stop, huh? <laughs> That's right. Look at those boys of mine. Waiting to see what I'll do. Waiting the chance to slip in, into the brush and head for home. Can you hold them? I can hold them. I'll shoot the first one that tries to leave, and they know it. Come on, but it's a horse! A horse! We'll have to make a camp here. They're great people for Romans. I told them to start looking for good ones. Yeah, and I know them. It'll take the rest of the day and half the night to find enough to move them towards Long Y again. How do the omens look to you? Huh? I can't say yet. The headhunters know we're coming, but they don't know why. If they knew we were coming after Tackett, 
Each in our own fashion, so to speak. I, I don't think there'd be any trouble from them. Well, they don't now. And there's no way to tell them. You're blaming Tackett for this? I am. You stupid fool. Do you really believe in this idiotic stand you've taken against him? Or is it a convenient answer for some mistake you made with the natives? I can't be quiet. Inez, stop it. Don't you believe it? Make her shut up, Donna. I'll shut up after you've answered Stop me. it. We've had enough. We don't need hysteria. Now be quiet, will you? You won't answer me. Will you? They've been headhunters from the beginning. So tell me why Tackett is to blame for what you found on the trail. Tell me why. I will, if you'll shut up long enough to hear it. You've been in Borneo too long. I know what the tropics do to men like you. I know the people. For ten years I've learned to know them. I understand about headhunting. To the dyak ahead of the strongest magic in the world... Strong enough to bring rain, make things grow. Strong enough to protect the whole kampong from plague or anything else. Like enemies. You should have been born in one of their filthy huts. You think like one. Forget it, Brown. Forget it. She'll find out I'm right. Headhunting was almost stopped until Tackett came here. Then it started again. Because they hate him. Because they're afraid of him. That's why they're collecting heads again, and that's the truth. Blame everything on Abel Tackett. If you can't find another reason for something, blame it on Abel Tackett. Oh, I've had enough. Ah! Brown, Brown, what the devil's the matter with you? You heard her. I've been in Borneo too long. Tension, hysteria, everything out of proportion. The distorted perspective of the jungle where emotions become sensitive as skin... Inez wanted to love Tackett. George wanted to kill Tackett. I wanted nothing but proof of his existence. Yet all of us were of one mind and one thought. All our efforts were directed toward Tackett. And Borneo was keeping us from him. We started to move again in the next morning. That day and the next were easier, physically at least. The country cleared some and we started to climb out of the humid jungle into a section where there seemed to be more air. The following day, we stopped before dark, and Brown pulled me into the privacy of a shadow. We'll be there tomorrow. Oh, that close. What then, Brown? <laughs> I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> I've learned to like you, Dollar. Thanks, but I still can't let you kill him. <laughs> I'm not so sure you can stop me. How would you get back to the coast without me? I've been asking myself the same thing. I'd be stupid to take the gamble, but I'd have no choice. So that's the way it is. Yeah, that's the way it is. All right. I can smell rain. It'll be here before morning. Our first sight of the village of Long Wai was from a low hill. It was veiled by the slanting sheets of rain that floated across. A welter of huts, two larger buildings for gatherings, but not a sign of life. Abel Tackett's hut was barely visible, a mile or so down the shallow valley. We started down toward it. What do those drums mean, Brown? Do you know? Yes. I know. Mama Tolu. <laughs> A happy little ceremony when the headhunters come home. It could turn sour if they knew we were here, but I, I think we can move across the clearing. Let's go. What are you going to do, Dollar? Aren't you even going to warn him? All right, if you won't, I will. Abel! Come on, take her. Keep her quiet. Come on, Dollar. I'm going inside. Wait a minute, Brown. We'll go in together. Tack it. I came here for nothing. He's already dead. Is that Packet? Must be. Hmm. They stopped being afraid of him. I wonder how long it'll take to undo the trouble he's caused here. Abel Tackett. 
And these dead. There was the body of a man lying on the floor. Dirty duck shorts and jacket. But no papers. I couldn't positively identify him as Abel Tackett. The natives who had killed him were headhunters. Expense account items six and seven, same as two and three, transportation back to New York. Item eight, cab fare to the address of Mrs. Abel Tackett. She seemed neither sad nor happy to see me or to hear what I had to say. He died, Mrs. Tackett, of fever. He was in the interior. There was no time to get him to a doctor. You saw him? No, I didn't. Then you can't be sure. There's no proof. But, Mrs. Tackett, absolute proof has a... has a different meaning in Borneo. He wanted to lose himself, didn't he? He could have changed his name. He could even have traded his identity with someone else. Couldn't he? He's dead, Mrs. Tackett. Look, I want you to go to probate court. Even without absolute proof, without, with what I brought back, you can have him declared legally dead. You're his sole heir. There are no other living relatives. His estate, his fortune... They're yours. They're yours to live with. That's why he left them to you. You can't go on struggling with a false hope. Please, Mrs. Tackett, don't stop living just because he did. You've got to believe me. Abel Tackett is dead. He's not dead. He's alive. He's living somewhere. And as long as he's alive, I'm alive. There was nothing to do. I left her in the old house with her records and her dark walls and her old letters. I left a young woman dying there, and there was nothing I could do. I walked out into the clean, fresh air and went home. Expense account total, $4,075.80. And for what? The only constructive thing I can make out of it is that it made me an expert on pure, unadulterated frustration. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd and David Ellis with music composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Edmund O'Brien can currently be seen starring in the Harry M. Popkin United Artists production, D.O.A., Featured in our cast were Maria Palmer, Tudor Owen, Raul Chavez, Ben Wright, Chris Kraft, and Dan O'Herlihy. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Join us next week at this time when, from Hollywood, Edmund O'Brien returns in another transcribed adventure of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. 